Welcome back to the Shankly Sessions, the weekly dose of everything Liverpool FC that we bring you from news to transfers to player watch during the Euros. As always, joining me on the show, my partner in crime, Dean Fitz. Dean, how we doing? Couldn't be better, my man. Couldn't be better. Good, good, every good. Day that, every day that passes is a day closer to the new Premier League season. Oh, we're buzzing for it, aren't we? Buzzing, buzzing, buzzing for it. Already booked five matches this season. And we're going to do an away oh, game and a Carabao Cup. We're going to do it all. And I heard also there's a McManaman the other night on um, BT, I think it was, or ESPN. He was talking about a Legends game in October against United. Oh, we have to go to that. We'll have to go to that. So our trip in October might be an extended stay, not just the Brighton game. We'll have to see. Um, a week away in Liverpool. Absolutely. As always, you know what to do. Dynamo Podcast Network for YouTube episodes of the show. Audio versions of the show will be available through Spotify, Apple iTunes, Podbean, wherever you pick up your audio versions of the show. And if you'd like to contact the show, we're on Twitter at Sessions Shanky. Let's get into this. A bit of news this week. Anfield and Liverpool dedicates its player tunnel to the season ticket holders um, out of respect for coming through COVID and stuff like that, the support they've shown for the club, where they're going to put the names of the 27,000 season ticket holders in the tunnel uh, with the red backdrop, that beautiful red backdrop with the white. And it's going to be phrased into the words, you'll never walk alone on one side and we are Liverpool on the other. This is a great move for the club, isn't it? Yeah, uh, unsurprising as well. Um, you'd like to imagine now a lot of clubs will follow suit and uh, pay tribute to those fans who went out and still bought season tickets regardless of not being able to go to the game just to keep putting money into the clubs. Um, great move on behalf of the club, unsurprising as well because um, at the end of the day, we are Liverpool. This means more. It's, it's kind of the mantra of the club and the fans are, are absolutely everything. So uh, great, great to hear. Um, I've seen a lot of a lot of tweets as well. Fans like, I hope my name is on Van Dyke's and I hope my name is on Mo Salas and all. It's great for as well for the younger kids coming up as well. You know what I mean? Um, just to, to kind of instill that that the fans mean everything to the to the club and the players. Yeah, absolutely buzzing to hear that. Yeah, it was absolutely. It reminded me of when I bought the the mosaic toilet for Ben for Christmas and knowing that that mosaic toilet would be on the side of. Anfield for the rest of our lives, you know. So it's quite yeah, awesome. unbelievable. I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to invest now and um, get the young lad's name. And um, I was looking into it as well. There, beside the the Hillsborough Memorial, where they have the 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 tiles on the ground now, where you can get the yeah. engravings and all. I'm definitely gonna look into. Um, yeah. You know, so if I get it done now, so when Lewis is a few years older, when I bring him over and I bring yeah. him and we wander around and be like. What's that on the ground there? And you'd see that his name yeah. with his dad, you know, and just 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 to get him started into the feeling that he, he really wants to, to love Liverpool as much as oh, fucking wasp. Um yeah, just it, it's it get, you get goosebumps talking about it because we all know, like you know how much Liverpool means to me, and I know how much Liverpool means to you, and it means to Ben and it means to Dylan and all. We we go over to the games together and with me, me and you, like you, I look at you as a, a brother, but I also look at you as a father figure as well. Like I've told you some of some of the, the dark places I've been into, and you know we go over to Liverpool games and we kind of forget about the problems that we do have, and that's something that I want to instill into Lewis. And you know, I, I said to my as soon as I found that we were having a boy, and I was like, the, literally, I just start uttering the words like Liverpool this, Liverpool that, and I was saying to me dad the other day, I was like. I think it's too soon to bring to bring Lewis to Liverpool match so we could be getting the ear protection on. He was like, Are you fucking mad? And he was like, I was like, No. And he was like, wait till it means something. But when you when you think about the getting the names engraved there at the ground and all, and you bring him over. Just like I we heard us standing up there and think about when I bring him over to his first game and I'm walking around him like his name is that on the ground and just to see that look on his face, you know. Yeah. Well, that's what I said to Ben. I said to Ben, when I'm long gone and he's going over with his kids, he'd be able to pop by the wall of champions and say hello to me before he heads into a game and all, you know. So it's a pretty cool thing to have, you know. So yeah, I'm sure these moment. fans are absolutely buzzing over this, you know what I mean? It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, LFC is always joining in in the city's Pride celebrations. They're going to host a variety of Pride, uh, Pride themed activities. This is great the way Liverpool as a club always fully encompassing everything in society and stuff like that. So, absolutely fantastic. Um, 
running all through July, which is Pride Month over there. So absolutely fabulous. Will we not get a few Pride flags and Pride flag, uh, Pride flags and go over for a, a weekend and, and, and give us socks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, also, uh, a man that's close to our heart that we dropped an episode on him, obviously uh, passed away 20 years ago this week, Joe Fagan. Um, we couldn't forget him. We absolutely put out a belter of an episode on the man there a while ago. We're going to reshare it again this week on Twitter. Um, yeah. Just to mark his, his passing, sadly, 20 years ago. Um, and yeah. that where, where, did the, where did the years go? Jesus, 20, 20 years. Um, they're one of the, the, the forefathers of the club, you know. We talked about when we done the, the special, and um, you know we were we 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 got lucky in the sense that we had Bill Shanky and then Bob Paisley, and then Joe Fagan took over the mantle from the two boys, and he just followed in the mantra of you know I do believe that had we not had those three managers one after the other, that the club could be in a different state, and the the club wouldn't be what it is now, you know, and. Everyone talks about how great Shankly and Paisley was, but never, ever forget just how much Joe Fagan meant to Liverpool Football Club. The, the, the founder of the, the boot room, you know, it was his idea solely. and like what, what he did for the club, um, got a bit upset when we done the special on him because I might only be a Liverpool fan since 1994. And I, oh, we, you as well as me, you were there before me. You celebrated the, the European Cups and what have you. I, I never really had the... Uh, the joy of all that success that the, the, the fans from back then did have. And it's only when we, we celebrate the success that we have now that you sit back and you take note of what these men did do for the club. So, look, he, he's gone. Jeez, 20 years, a flu boy, but he'll never, ever be forgotten, you know. And like you said, long after you were gone, long after I'm gone, people will still talk about what Joe Fagan did for the club. Absolutely, 100%. Um... Five years of Sadio Mane at the club. Where's that five years gone? <laughs> I mean, that yeah. seems like that's gone like that. Like, um, yeah, we're going to no, be um, we're going to be dropping an episode this week looking at those five years of Sadio yeah. Mane as a little sort of bonus episode for our viewers. So stay tuned to that dropping this week. But yeah, incredible signing at a time when we were doing that signing, we were getting laughed at. I was yeah. just going to say that. I was just going to say that when we signed Sadio Mane, and people are like, "Is this really?" The signing that like takes Liverpool to the next level. Same with Mo Salah, same with Bobby Firmino. But yeah, I was watching the videos of him during the week, the five years of Sadio Mane. And yeah, him, him and Bobby, I, I, I was watching again the other day. I must have watched it about 10 times since it came out there, the end of the Storm documentary. And you can't help but smile. Whenever Sadio comes into picture, you can't help but smile because he's just always happy. He's just such a positive vibe around the club. And now, some of my favourite memories are his celebrations with Bobby and they're copying each other and Bobby does the high kick and then Mane does the high kick behind yeah. them and they're pretending to play the guitar like the Beatles yeah, and all. The, the guns and all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. it's great. Um, yeah, like you said, when we, when we signed them from Southampton and you were thinking, Jesus Christ, is, is Sadio Mane, who's going to take us to a Premier League title? And yeah, you look. You look at the last three, not just the last five years, but the the, the last three years. Um, his contribution to the, on the pitch and off the pitch, what he's done back home and building the hospital and all. Such a selfless man. Um, you just wish there was more people like him yeah. in in football. You know what I mean? There's, he's not about the the nice cars. Now he, he obviously he has the nice things in life, but he's he's such a humble, selfless man, and and everything is everything is about others. You see, during the lockdown, the coffee shop that he used to stop off with on the, the way to train, and still went in every day, made donations every few weeks to make sure everybody was still paid and they were kept above board and all. So we're looking forward to now sitting down during the week. Hopefully, get a couple of other Liverpool fans on and contribute as well in their favourite moments. No doubt, all our favourite moments will be the same, but. That, that, that's what I love about the Shankly sessions. Now we have a platform where we can sit down and solely talk about the great things that are in the club, and Sadio Mane is definitely one of those great cool things. Yeah, I'm wondering, has he got the iPhone screen fixed yet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just hilarious. It? He's just a great human being, really, isn't he? I mean, the stuff he does for Senegal is just incredible. And even the pictures of him there now that he's off and he's back in Senegal with the lads in the, in the village and stuff like that. I was just going to say that, like, you, you've lad now, come here, I'm, 
you, you, the year that was in as well and the, 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 the stress and the turmoil and the tiredness and what have you, not just at Liverpool, again, across all clubs, we look at the lads and you have lads off in a beat and you have lads in Mauritius and you have lads in Mexico and living the life and all. And then you see there's El Sadio in the, the little shanty town playing kickabout with the kids and his friends and drinking out coconuts and what have you. It's, it's, it, it's really refreshing to see nowadays. Especially after such a tough season. I mean, he yeah. had a real tough season, you know. So yeah, he, really, he's, really he's one of the, again. He was one of the only players that openly came out and said he was suffering mentally. Now, I know, I know a lot of players were in, in world football, but that one thing that I always thought when I talk about the, the end of the storm documentary, there's a part in it, and if you haven't seen it, keep an eye out for the part where Sadio sits down and he starts the, the segment, big happy smile on his face. And he talks about mental health and he's like, I do believe that it's all in the head. The, the fact that he came out and said he, he went to a, a doctor to get, get tested to see if there was any, anything physically wrong with him. That, that can, like, mental health is, is massive, especially the last 16, 17 months with, with, with everybody, not just, uh, not just men, women, children. Everybody is, has been feeling it. Um, and you, you'd like to think that when someone of, of that profile comes out and talks about mental health, that it's helped people realise that this guy is making over a hundred grand a week. He's he's got everything in life that he needs and all, and he's still suffering. You know, I've suffered. You know, you know, I've told you I've suffered. I've I had a breakdown during the week holding my son. I was like, I'm not doing anything right. You know, I'm gonna be a shit father. I said, me, me missus, she was off getting her nails done and rightly so because of what she went through, not just during the labour, but in the last 10 months, I had a breakdown and I think to myself, I don't want to bring my son, son up with, with my mental problems. But when, when someone like that, and it helps a lot when someone of that profile, especially someone that you, you look up to and you idolise, when someone like that talks about their mental problems, it makes you realise that, look, yeah, you're suffering, but things could could be worse when when they could in every situation things could be worse so yeah it, I, I love the fact that he came out and he talked about his, his mental health problems both mentally and physically yeah absolutely it just goes to show it affects everyone it's, it's not the size of your wallet or your bank account everyone gets affected by these things regardless of that situation yeah and i just i just like to say as well just anyone that's watching the podcast that's kind of new to it, if you're only a new subscriber, whether you're tuning in for the for anything on the Dynamo Podcast Network, but anyone that's just tuning in for the like the upper tier and the Shankly sessions, like if you if you're ever, ever feeling down and you have any interest whatsoever in what we're talking about, don't be afraid to reach out and say, look, you'd love to come on because I look at Noel as a brother of mine and I look at Noel as a father of mine. And all the lads that come on, yeah, we all get on each other's nerves. But at the end of the day, we come on to chat. Darren McComiskey, and I know he won't, he won't feel shit about me saying this. Darren came out after our last mashup of the season and he talked about losing his father. And he, he's seen this as an outlet. I see this as an outlet. Noel, we go to matches. We went to WrestleMania together. I cannot drop into Noel whenever I want. I have a new kid here now as well. I come on here to do what we're doing now, to have a chat. To forget about your problems, even if it's only for a half an hour. Yeah. If you're ever, ever feeling down, hit us up. What we're here for you. We're here for you. It doesn't matter if we, if we don't know you. Come on, have a chat in a couple of DMs. Say, look, you're a bit anxious about coming on. You're a bit nervous. I guarantee you, I started off being real anxious and nervous down days, and now I just don't shut up. This is an outlet. If you're ever feeling down, we're here for you. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. And we have had listeners and viewers and all who have told me privately and all that it makes a big difference to their week and their day and stuff. So that's great. And even if you're not a Liverpool fan, it's irrelevant. If you just want to chat about football and stuff like that, we have the upper tier and the Monday mashups and all those other shows that will be going coming back on stream, you know. Um let's get into transfers. One that we spoke about in the transfer show, obviously Camille Garaba Grabara, I should Grabara. say. Yeah, uh, permanent move to FC Copenhagen, three million. With a twenty percent sell-on clause, um, good move for him. Good business for Mike Edwards. Good business for the player. Good, good business for Copenhagen as well. Very good goalkeeper, decent shot stopper, safe hands, good distribution. You know, he's been at Liverpool, I think, for over four years, if I'm not wrong. You know, he's he's learned from Allison. You know, 
he's rubbed shoulders with like a uh, John Attenborough, unbelievable goalkeeping co- coach, you know, and Jurgen Klopp as a manager, you know, you're you're only gonna pick up good things from these players or these people. So look, it didn't work out from at Liverpool, but who'd say that he doesn't come back in three or four years time? You know, he's going off to play his trade now, possibly play every week. Um, good business for everybody, including the player. Um, yeah, best of luck to him. I hope it works out, and no doubt we we'll see him down the line. Yeah, absolutely. Liverpool being linked with Renato Sanchez. I think we also spoke about it on the transfer show, but I think the feeling is at the moment we're being linked with other midfielders that are higher level. And they're yeah. probably the ones that we're going to go more towards. He's also been heavily linked with Arsenal. So I think Arsenal, as you said, the transfer show will be a good home for him. Yeah, I think Arsenal will be the, the, the better move for him because he, he'll, he'll start every week. If he if he's interested in coming to Liverpool and fighting his way into the starting eleven, having Champions League football and all, what have you. Um, look, I won't, be, I won't be sad if we signed Renato Sanchez. I won't be saying, oh, we could have signed this and we could have signed that. Um, but as you said, we're linked with Milinkovic Savage, where you linked with Yuri Tillemans, Saul Niguez is the standout name for me. If, if Liverpool could sign him, yeah, I'd be really, really excited. So, look, the names that we're linked with, if we can sign any one of the names that we're linked with, we're linked with this lad, Octavio, as well. There's talk as well that this deal could be finalised during the week because uh, Marco Grugis is part of the deal. Very good, young, exciting player. Klopp, look, apparently Klopp's had annoying him for over 18 months. Um, he'd be a player that would be not necessarily for now. He'd be one to come in and kind of just settle in, bed in. Um, one thing I will say about the midfield situation is I'm, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued to see what happens with Naby Keita. I just don't see him, uh, don't see that working out for him. Which I think we haven't got time to sit around and wait for a player for another year who's going to spend probably two thirds of the season now on injury. So if we can get Naby out, I don't, I'm not saying that with, with spite and saying like, I want him gone. If we can get Naby off the wage bill as well, with Saul Niguez available, you know, that frees up more funds and uh, another role and another empty void that needs to be filled. So, yeah, look, whoever we sign in that, that position with the names that we've been linked with, I won't, I won't be uh, disappointed. Yeah. Um, farewell to Ozan Quebec, who penned a nice letter there, a farewell letter there the other day, thanking everyone at Liverpool and stuff like that. This is kind of one I'm a little bit torn on because yeah. he came in at a time when we needed him, you know, and he did a decent job. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like, I kind of thought we may sign him, but then when you see Konate coming in and stuff like that, you've not Phillips there. and You know, you still have Joel Matt up, you've got Gomez coming back and stuff like that. It's It'd be kind of, although we're so thankful for what he did at the time when we really needed Santa Hafs, I think it's really a case of I think it'd be a shame if we kept them there and we're not going to use them. You know what I mean? And I, I think I think it's a good idea that yeah, he does be up on, even though I'm torn a little bit on it. Yeah, I'm the same. I feel the exact same way. I'm very torn on it. Um, I, I thought coming towards the end of the season that he was kind of nailed on to sign for the club, and then the Canate thing we we talked about three or four times about it's kind of like the the best kept secret in football that we were going to sign Canate. Um, yeah, what what you said, I wouldn't like him to see him sign just to just to fill a hole on a on a bench, you know, even though it was only eighteen million or what have you. Um I, I seen somewhere during the week as well that Arsenal were linked with him. Um which I think I, I'd like to see him sign for someone in England, but I wouldn't necessarily like to see him sign for someone that's gonna be hanging around in the lower half of the table and taking a hiding every week and, and you know, come towards the end of the season sitting on a, a relegation battle. So it was very nice to read the, the letter and all. He, he loved being part of the club. And we talk about when he came in, you know, we talked about in the first two or three games, he didn't really seem tactically aware. But the, the more games that passed by, the more he settled in. And, you know, we have to be thankful because he played a part in us getting top four as well because that run we went on towards the end of the season, he was outstanding. Um, so all the best to him, wherever he is. Where I'd like to see him sign for Leipzig. You know, I think he'd be a natural with, with them losing Kunate and Upa Meccano. I think there's a big hole to fill there at Leipzig, and I think he could really do a job there. You know, when he was with Schalke, they were absolutely dirt. Um, he's a better player than Schalke. What what they what they were spoiled until last season. So with the hole that's left at Leipzig, I think that'd be a great move for him. Yeah, absolutely. So we wish him well and we thank him for his service. 
even in that short period of time. He was absolutely Definitely. vital to us pushing to get that top four. Um, Kingsley Coleman, again, we touched on on the transfer show. Um, Liverpool had lodged a bid somewhere in the region about 35 million, but Bayern are valuing them at 77. Bit of a gap there. Can you see a way where we meet in the middle somewhere and, and get him? No, I don't think we we when when Kingsley Coleman is at firing all cylinders, he's a he's a thing of beauty. But uh, Jorgen Klopp and Michael Edwards won't be hung over a uh, won't be hung over a barrel and told by Bayern Munich that you have to give us 60, 55, 60 million for him. Um, he's a bit part bit part player there. Um, yeah, I don't I don't see that coming to. Him. To fruition as much as I'd love to. So we talked about last week on the transfer show. I, I'd absolutely love him at Liverpool. You, you think when, like one thing I will say, when Salah and Mane go to the African Cup of Nations, we need someone better than Steve Okarigi to be like filling that for it. Um, and when we were talking about last week, I was thinking, Jesus, when the two boys do go off to the African Cup of Nations, a front three of Kingsley Combe and Jota and Firmino wouldn't be a, a bad. Uh, a bad, a bad attack, would it? But um, yeah, I just, I just don't see it happen now. I think it's too much money. Um, I think Bayern are a bit overzealous in their approach to that. You know, they're they're happy to sell them, but I just think they're asking for too much money. Um, can see him going to the likes of PSG or something now. Someone that we won't bat an eyelid to the money that's being asked. But um, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, Daniel Mallon. Um, still talks going on there. Still contact with the agents and with the clubs and stuff like that. Certainly a signing that we'd like to see come in. Certainly a very, very good footballer. Um, Definitely. I was uh, last week when we were talking about the, the two names in the Dutch team I was keeping an eye on were Denzel Dumfries and I talked about Dan, Daniel Mallon. I think probably in, in February I brought his name up. Outstanding player when he came on for Holland. You know, two assists. Very uh, you like players, you like strikers to be selfish in front of goal. But there's a couple of times where he he's seen the the better option, and uh, sometimes with Liverpool, the lads do get a bit selfish, and uh, the the move and the the attack comes to comes to nothing. So um, he's a he's a breath of fresh air to me. Very alert, very very fast. Um, has a great approach to, to to being a striker. You know, he he's always thinking about the move after he gets the ball. Um, I, I we talked about him last week. I love watching him playing. Um, I'd be very very happy if they, with, with Pat and Dakin now going to Leicester. I'd be more than happy to sign the uh, Daniel Mallon. He'd be a great uh, addition to the team. Yeah, and I suppose we couldn't round out the transfers any better than Rafa goes blue signs for Everton. Yeah, as I said, uh, Rafa's still a hero of mine. Um, I'll always adore Rafa. I'll adore him more now if Everton got relegated. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just, you know, what he did for the club, what he did for the city as a whole, not just the red side, but the blue side as well. Um, the donations to the Hillsborough Foundation. Um, I just I don't appreciate I'm not going to talk about how much I hate Everton again. It's on the train. If you want to hear how much I hate Everton, just listen to the transfer show. Um, I just think Everton fans, they need to kind of get in line and appreciate the situation that they're in because there is a good project there. They have got good players. They fell short last season. I think they fell short last season because I think a lot of players in that team believed that the start they had to the season meant that that, that was going to continue. It doesn't work that way. You have to work for it every single week. We've seen it with Liverpool. We took the eye off the ball for a while, as well as tiredness and as, as as injuries. We took the eye off the ball for a while, and last year was nearly a disaster for us. I think a manager like Rafa, who, who will demand respect and is loved and adored around the sea, I think Everton fans, if, if he has a good start to the season, I think Rafa will, will settle with the Everton fans. Um, and I, I just think that they need to get down off that high horse and get, get in line and stop with the death threats and stuff like that. Now, it might only be a small community of Everton fans, but, you know, that's that's just the way it is. But they need to kind of back him. They don't have a choice now. He's not going to turn around tomorrow and say, look, I don't want this. He's there now. He got the job. Believe in what he's about. As I said, he broke the stronghold in the league. And now I'm not saying he's going to win the league with Everton, but he, broke, he knows what's needed to make a team successful. Yeah, I think with the right sprinkling of investment there, I think he could deliver a cup to Everton, all right. And 
you know, I mean, they've been long enough waiting on silverware at this stage, you know. Yeah, as, as we said, they don't need if they if the, the players that are there, if they can buy into his project and they can add two or three decent players, you know, the, not the sky, the sky isn't the limit for them, but you know, they can have a good crack at it. You know what I mean? They just need to buy into what he's about. He doesn't go out and play attacking football. He knows how to win games, though. We've we seen it with, when he was with Liverpool. We've seen it with, look, he done all right at Chelsea. And he wasn't too shabby. You know, he done it with Valencia. If you just buy into his project, you know, he, he's a decent manager. And I just think that if he goes in, he gets two or three decent players and the players buy into what he's about, that, you know, good things could be on the horizon for Everton. First five games will be critical, won't they? Yeah, hundred percent. Let's switch it up. Player watch. Um, fair to say that the Liverpool players out on international duty between the Euros and the Copa America doing pretty good, aren't they? Look, we've had a fairly successful international period there. You hand out there yesterday for England popping up with a header. Um, yeah. You know. Um, great, great, great. As much as we we dislike England, uh, it was great to see him finally get his first goal for England, and you could see in the celebration like how much it meant to him. Um, we we love we all love Hendo, don't we? Um, regardless of what nationality he is, but um, yeah, him not playing as much as well, but he's still training every day. It's kind of like an early preseason and getting those minutes with England. You know, it's it's building his match fitness, and um, with Thiago. Shakiri, can I just say about Shakiri? He's, he's been outstanding for Switzerland at the Euros. And I talked about it last week. It makes me think, why can't he just do that at Liverpool? I know a lot of players, it means more play for their country than it does to play for the club. And he took the armband the other night because Shaka was suspended. Um, you, you just love to know what's going on in his head because there was a time at, with Liverpool where for about seven or eight months he wasn't getting a sniff in. And I, I, I put it down to I think he believes more in himself than, than he should. I think he thinks that he should be playing every week. If he just done what he does best, which is get the ball on the ground and attack, walk tirelessly, forget about you know the hype that he probably puts around himself. Now, we all know he's an outstanding player. I just don't get why he can't do a week in, week out with Liverpool. We've seen it the four, series, the four season with Liverpool, the games against United and stuff like that. He's an outstanding player. And if he can just if he can keep that going week in week out, I'd be glad to have him at Liverpool. Yeah, I think he probably has to build up that confidence with Klopp, doesn't he? That he actually wants it more, and try to force Klopp's hand by showing him what he's about. Um, I I get the feeling at Liverpool he just falls a little bit short, and that's not to say when he's come in and played he hasn't disappointed. He's generally played well. Yeah. Um, but I think. I don't think he, he, he twists Klopp's arm behind his back enough to show him enough to have the confidence to put him in there. You know, even even from a substitution point of view with 20 minutes ago, week in, week out. Um, and I think he has to try and figure that out um, I think, or, or else he has to move on. Yeah, I think maybe that he's looking at the situation with the front three and he probably doesn't believe enough that he's good enough to push the boys out. Where last season should be so much motivation to say they are human like Mo Salah a top scorer again if he had any more belief in himself he'd probably score about 50 goals a season Sadio Mane off the boil you know probably his worst season in football and he'd probably tell you that himself Bobby Firmino wasn't at his best but then you look at the list of players that he scored more goals than last season you know he still had a very good season but but that they, they, they treat him each to their own, had good seasons, but not to the level we expect for them. Yeah. So, as good as as good as good we, we were in coming towards the end of the season, why can't Shaqiri be looking at it saying, these lads are human, I can break in there if I, if I just walk, put my head down and walk hard. Like, you look what he's doing with Switzerland because he knows he's going to be one of the first teams on the, on the, the team, or one of the first names on the team sheet. You ha- you're, you're at a club like Liverpool, you have a chance of being successful again. Why can't you just say to yourself, I want to be here? Can't you just like, throw the towel in and say, look, I want to go elsewhere and play every week, but not win trophies? Yeah, I think the Swiss setup is slightly different as well, isn't it, from a formation point of view as well? And it allows him to express himself kind yeah. of in that pocket. Um, whereas Liverpool don't kind of play that kind of pocket with their formation. You know what I mean? It's, it's more the overlapping, you know, 
back players and stuff like that, rather than that kind of shoot through the middle and stuff like that. You know, it, it's nearly a case where Bobby plays in his position, but when he drops deep, the way we've seen Bobby drop deep to pick up the ball from midfield and stuff like that, he's nearly playing that Shakiri position as well as his position. Um, and I think that's the difficulty in terms of the formation at times, you know. Um, what what about the penalty shootout? It was have we seen a worse penalty shootout? Considering the penalty shootouts we've experienced in recent times with Villarreal and stuff like that, this one was horrific, wasn't it? You, where like you look at the penalties from the France and Switzerland game, and then you you like the complete polar opposite in the the Spain and Switzerland game, they were almost telling the keeper, "I'm going to put it." To your right hand side, about two feet away from the post, about yay height. All you need to do is just dive that way. And I was thinking to myself, the pressure couldn't have told because the pressure against France was a lot. I know it was in, it was it was after the France game and it was it was further on in the competition at all. But they just looked like they just gave up before they even got to the penalty spot, and that was such a big opportunity because the Spanish penalties weren't that great either. You know, it was. Yeah, they really missed a the trick there, to, especially being a man down so early in the game to get the penalties. You know, they, they getting to the final whistle an extra time with a man down with all the pressure that Spain were, were putting on them as well. They should have went. That should have been a, at least a life, lads. We have a chance here to knock Spain out. And look, it, it, it went the other way. And but look. I don't think anybody expected them to be France. Um, I think when they had the man sent off against Spain, I think a lot of people thought that was game up. But they, you know, they fought that bleeding balls off. Uh, do you know what I loved? I loved as well was when it went to extra time and the manager stepped away from the team huddle. Granit Xhaka stood in and read the Roy Act. It was fucking great to see. And this again, when I talk about Arsenal, these guys at Arsenal need to stop thinking that they deserve to be at the top table. Getting rid of Granit Xhaka, he was a natural leader. He should have been captain of that team and not uh, Aubameyang. That's a massive loss. A massive loss. They will not replace a leader like that in the team. And I, The only player in that team that I look at who could lead them is Kieran Tierney, and he's only a kid. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Thiago, we obviously mentioned, I mean, he's not getting much minutes at the Euros, but you know, came into that game the other day there on the 113th minute, but uh, it's just, just weird again from Lewis Enrique. It's hard to understand it, but again, benefits us greatly in terms of it's like he's nearly having a, a an off-season rest, isn't it, even though he's had a huge international tournament? I don't. I, I can't make sense of this at all. Um, from a selfish point of view, it's great. He's training every day. He's playing 113 minutes, I think he's played across the whole tournament. Um, what in five games um, he's one of the when he plays in that figure around the, the back of the attack he's one of the best in the game what he does we've seen when the year uh, two years ago Bayern Munich won the Champions League the, the turn of the season he was probably one of the best players on the planet in what he was doing sitting behind the attack um, he put a ball through a keyhole um, and you know Sarabia started doing nothing um, Koke yeah, okay, okay for me. I think Pedri probably won't for the future. I think there's a bit too much uh, hype around him. He's had, he's had a good tournament, though, Pedri, in fairness. Still and bad. I just think, yeah, yeah, he has been a good player. But I just think when, when Switzerland had the man sent off and they were being kind of resolute, I thought that was the time. And I think the lads from the Irish commentary team said, now was the time to get Thiago on. You know, he picked that pass. Pick that pass. Look, Spain are they're still in the semi-finals and nobody, nobody's going. They got knocked out in the in the group stages, which they were lucky to get out of as well as like the likes of Denmark. I think the spotlight would have been on Enrique, and I honestly think he would have been sacked. But look, they're in the semi-finals, so nobody's going to point a finger at him. But for me, I just think he deserves to play. Um, maybe he'll play against Italy because of how Italy are resolute at the back. I think Thiago, he might spring a surprise and start Thiago and say, well, here's your chance. But, um, yeah, I'd be, I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked. From, a, from a service point of view, though, um, it, it just he it means he'd be fresh coming back to us pre season. Absolutely. Jota bowed out with Portugal. I think he was one of the outstanding players, though, for Portugal in the tournament without a shadow of a doubt. And one of the outstanding players in the tournament. Yeah, definitely. A real good tournament. Yeah, 100%. Um, 
showed showed all Liverpool fans what we already know. Um, you look at his goals per game ratio um, for Liverpool, and considering the amount of time he spent there injured, uh, I just have a feeling next year he's going to add probably another twenty goals to the attack. Um, and I don't, I just think with, with how last season went for us as well. I just think that probably other than Mo, we know Sadio gets kind of a bit upset and has a little bit of a meltdown when he doesn't start. But I just think Jota being as good as he is, it's not like you're being dropped for Divock Origi. And I just want to touch on him as well before we finish up. But it's not like you're being dropped for Divock Origi, who isn't necessarily coming into the team and he's banging in goals for fun. Um, I just think Jota, when he gets a chance next season, whether it be from the from the get go or whether it be a few games in, I just think when he comes in, that we have a whole different element of surprise to the attack next season. And for me, Mo is going to do what he's doing doing the last four years. I think Sadio is going to come good again. Bobby's just going to continue to do what Bobby does. He'll he'll score between probably twelve and. 18 goals, a load of assists, tireless work rate. But I just think you're going to be adding another 20 goals from Jota across the season. And for me, if those four boys can score the goals that like, we expect them to score, I just think everyone else needs to uh, stand up and pay attention because everything's kind of going around what City are going to do if they sign Kane and if they sign Grealish and everything's talking about Chelsea and if they sign this player and that player. Liverpool... We need a couple of players on the bench, but I just think you add those extra 20 goals to that team as it is, and you, it's a whole different fruit in the prospect. Yeah, absolutely. Let's finish it up. Copa America, Brazil getting another good 1 0 win, uh, securing a semi final spot in it. Uh, Bobby's uh, substitution scored to win a goal, uh, Paqueta, uh, but Alisson and Fabinho not used again. So, again, this is going to be good for us in so far as these guys are still getting a rest, even though they're in the midst of a big international tournament. Um, it's the fact that they're getting the rest, Noel, but they're at home with their families. I talked about this with Alison. You know, they, I don't think they got home like, to their family for a decent break for 18 months. So with the boys playing here, there and everywhere, you know, staying sharp, but having that break with their family, especially Alison. And I don't want to keep talking about it every week when we bring up the Copa America. This break for him and coming back then to Liverpool, having settled, not not necessarily grieved. Well, he is obviously grieving, but he's over there with the family. They're all grieving together, kind of releasing everything, yeah. you know, and just selling himself down and coming back fresh. You know, it's looking kind of like uh, Argentina-Brazil final, um, which I think we'll all be sitting up to watch when that happens. But, um, yeah, I just I can't wait to get the boys back. I can't wait till everyone's back. Um, I can't wait to see the happy faces coming into the acts of training ground and not Melwood and just you know everyone just buzzing you know regardless from here on out regardless what happens with England and all with Spain you can just see all these boys coming back hungry they, we got the Champions League football no one expected us to finish toward and I just think it's a new lease of life for this team and I'm sticking by my guns and saying that Liverpool are really going to push Chelsea and Man City next year Absolutely hopefully well appreciate you coming on this has been our weekly look back on Shankly Sessions at all things Liverpool from transfers to news to player watch all that good stuff any Liverpool fans out there listening drop your comments let us know what you think or anything you'd like us to touch on our topics as Dean said earlier if you're struggling regardless of whether you're a Liverpool fan or not hit us up or come on if there's any way we can help out we will of course as always Dynamo Podcast Network on YouTube for the shows audio versions of the show on Anchor through all your audio versions where you get them there Apple iTunes Spotify Podbean wherever you get them and if you'd like to contact the show on Twitter at Sessions Shankly also on the upper tier for Facebook and also on Instagram we will talk to you again next week cheers bud see you soon my man